What I wanted to draw your attention to, but this is always like this with classifications. We always make classifications in real life for a particular purpose. And this purpose usually dictates how many groups we meet. Mm -hmm. So it's always easier to have two groups rather than five, but sometimes we just need five, yeah. five and uh, that's it. Absolutely. If we acceptable. have, for example, three different grammar structures that can be used to refer to the past, so we need to be able to find three values according to some parameter how to distinguish between them. Because if we find two, we have a problem. And we know, because for example, like, why do one of the reasons why people mix up between past simple and present perfect? Because they're both about the past. So, they are. I mean, we speak, we use present perfect to speak about the past. We refer to the past, don't we? We connect past and present. But okay. we refer to the past. Yeah. Well, you see, if it was that easy to say the present perfect is about present and not about the past, people would never make a mistake. But we have so many okay. people around Europe who do make this mistake, don't we? So, uh, and another reason is that in different languages, you don't it works in a different perfect. way. Say in German and French, it works very different from English. I mean, a similar, a similar perfect structure. So, but but this is ultimately why I gave this example. It's ultimately the same question. So when we make grammar distinctions, we look for parameters to distinguish. According to which parameter we can distinguish between two structures, for example. When we do literature, and we when we compare two texts, or something within a text, if we take two characters, for example, how do we compare characters? What does it mean to compare two characters? Or what does it mean to compare two texts? It means to find parameters according to which we can find similar and different values. When we compare two texts, we can take genre, we can take author, we can, these are all parameters. When we take characters, we again can choose parameters according to which we compare them. What does it mean to distinguish between synonyms? So a typical task when people study linguistics is this, you know, distinguishing between synonyms or even advanced levels of language learning. How do we distinguish between synonyms? We have a synonymic chain. What does it mean to distinguish between them? Yeah, so again, we need parameters in a general way according to which we can see where they're similar, where they're different. Then, then uh, it, 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 it's easier to teach. It's not just the question of going through dictionaries. It's also defining. But basically, parameters for distinguish between all the synonyms are the same, if you come to think about it. They can be different. They are more or less the same. What's different is usually are the values under these parameters. Well, I, I, I just wanted to draw your attention to one uh, characteristic of all these tools. They should be universal. You should be able to apply them for different purposes, because if you need a separate tool for each purpose, it's not very helpful. So it's more or less generic tool. It has its advantages. It works across fields. It also has disadvantages. When it's universal, it's not clear how to apply it to a very specific problem. So therefore we all have had difficulties. How does it work here? How does it work there? And what we will do in the evening today, we'll see uh, how we can use this tool to create more specific things we need for a certain type of task to text. So how it works.